Our panel today is entitled Women in STEM, Is It Easy? Well, the last time, a few months ago, I was on a television interview and they asked me the typical question. Jessica, please tell us about the difficulties you face as women in engineering. And I smiled and I said that people watching will actually think that I go home every time, every day to cry. And deep down, I took a note that it would be the last time I talk about difficulties and challenges for two main reasons. One, it's first because uh, it shifts our internal focus from the aspirations and vision into something else which is so negative as difficulties. And second, because we often forget that we are influencers and influencing other people. And instead of encouraging women to go into STEM, we're actually making them more reluctant to do that. Therefore, today, instead of talking about the challenges, we're going to focus on opportunities, motiva motivation, and what's being done. Today with us we have Bella. Bella is 16 and she already started uh, her tech startup. Uh, Bella, can you tell us what motivated you and inspired you into pursuing and starting your uh, career as a tech startup founder in a very uh, early age? Um, first of all, good evening everybody. And uh, I would like to thank, thank Miracle Foundation for giving me this opportunity again this year. Um, I've always had the urge to actually be the one who is behind the table and recruiting my friends and my friends and uh, the people I know at the time when, when my college comes to an end. But um, saying all of this when I'm in grade 12, senior year, it just sounds really easy, but it isn't as easy as it seems. And I, didn't, I, did, I had never like, realized the stuff that I would, I would have to go through in order to achieve my dream. That is to be the one who creates jobs instead of going according to the conventional idea that be the one to go for a job, just go for a job after college is over. So I wanted to be the one to create the job. Now, in a society where people feel that uh, you know girls and entrepreneur, go, girls and entrepreneurship never works together, that you know entrepreneurship is not meant for girls, it was it is kind of difficult to actually come up as a girl entrepreneur and as a startup. There are like um, I feel that see that I, I wanted to take the first step towards actually take you know motivating people and encouraging them to actually be an entrepreneur because you know if if you see in my school. Most people don't even look at entrepreneurship as an option. They always have, okay, I want to be, I want to go after college is over, I'm going to go for a job. But no one even thinks that, okay, go for a job, but how will you even go for a job when there are, no, when there are very little jobs in the market? So that's why I wanted to be the one who creates jobs instead of, you know, being the one, okay, just okay, I go for a job after college ends. And I, I think that just how Mira as a mentor and a, and as an idol has inspired me so much to actually take the first step and you know stand out of the crowd. I feel if I take the first step by uh, starting up at such a young age, I would have many people, probably my younger sister, my, my uh, friends, who would actually follow me and also want to become an entrepreneur as, and successful as an entrepreneur because uh, I feel that it's, it's, not po it's not possible that all of you just go for the same thing unless you have someone who's creating jobs out there, especially when uh, girls today don't have such, a, uh, such an opportun many opportunities present to them. So uh, I feel the only, po only way possible is to like, lead by giving an example. And there are, these are the factors that actually motivated me to act start up at such a young age. Thank you. You have traveled all over the world and uh, you have worked in nonprofit fields, uh, in theater, and now you've moved into technology. Can you please tell us what motivates you and how do you motivate yourself to keep going within all these challenges and all this change? Um, good, e uh, good afternoon. It's a great honor to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me. So yeah, I've uh, traveled to uh, about 86 countries now. And I'm 27 years old, so that's cramming quite a lot of countries into years. But I think what I find really inspiring about technology is the fact that I can identify, for example, personally, I'm passionate about health and I'm passionate about communicating. So something that really excites me about technology is the fact that I can take the best of both worlds to devise a solution that works for a problem that I feel we face. So as somebody who believes strongly in gender equality, I feel that access to accurate health information is very limited to women. 
particularly those in certain regions where there are cultural barriers or infrastructural barriers to getting that information out. So something that, that motivates me to always keep going and try and, and find answers is what do I think is an issue and what technology can I use to make sure that that issue diminishes, that it gets less, and that more people have access to accurate information. Technology is huge. It's not just coding. It's not just computer science. It's also about communicating in technology and making sure that the solutions you use tackle the problem that you face. Not, it's not a one-stop shop. Not every mode of technology suits every problem. So I really enjoy finding those creative solutions through innovative use of technology to tackle topics that I'm passionate about, which are health and education. And thank you for, for inviting me. It's very exciting to be here today. We focus so much on getting more women into technology. However, is just a, it's just a success receipt to just entering a STEM field, or does it take uh, something else? Mariam, as a CEO, can you please tell us about this? And on a personal level, what do you think you need to reach a certain level of success? Uh, hi, everyone. Basically, uh, I'm just not a CEO of a tech company. I'm, I'm, I also teach uh, at a local university inside Pakistan, Mohammed Zunai University. And I'm also doing my PhD from UK University of Salford. So basically what I've seen, and uh, I recently started my startup, which is M&M Innovators. We have our business partners over here as well in Dubai. Uh, basically what I've seen traveling all across the world, like her, I've also traveled uh, many countries, not at least 82, but around about 10, 20. So what I have generally seen is that there are really, really amazing women in STEM. Like we have amazing women present over here as well. But what we are lacking is that initiative that, uh, as some of them mentioned over here as well, is that we lack that initiation that women do not come forward and they do not want to be the person who take the first step. And that is why, like, being corely in computer science, like, my, I've always been in the field of computer science, is what I've seen is that women are really, really good. And, like, you can see that they're amazing women, you know, like, we have people over here who are from IBM, from HP, and, like, who have done great work. But what I feel what they lack is that they lack taking the first step and they are scared of being entrepreneurs. And we have seen a lot of talk going around over here that women need to take the lead. They need to come into lead positions. So why wait you know, in an organization for 10, 20 years and not still get your equal right? And why don't you start up your own business where you can be good at? Because I do think that we're very good at coding and we're equally skilled and we're equally competitive when it comes to whatever you want and like uh, many women over here raise their hands like they're married they have kids and still they're here and you know they're doing jobs and all so i i do think if women want to do something they can do it and i would really appreciate you know if you can all come up like there are amazing events like uh, mira foundation where amazing people are here you can network and you should bring ideas and establish your own startups and you have a lot of support going around with, multi with different uh, programs which she will further on tell you about different initiatives that, that can be taken. So good luck and I do wish to see more women in tech and tech CEOs in future. Thank you. Dr. Hand. Dr. Hand, as a university director, can you please tell us what's being done on the academic level? And also, are any, does just launching any initiative mean it will automatically be a success story? Good afternoon. I'm very happy to be here, and I'm very happy to see my students at the back who just completed the hackathon. So that's why I wave to them. And I'm, uh, I think it's very interesting times to be in this position because I can see uh, a change, or uh, rather a difference between what's happening here and what's happening in... Western countries. Our university has a campus in Edinburgh and a campus in Dubai. In Dubai, we have 30% female students. In Edinburgh, it's only 11%, and they're very happy with the 11% because it's an improvement on previous years. So what can universities do about this even further? Uh, when we go to open days, when we address schools, we try to emphasize that especially computer science, is a field where female are very welcome. Uh, it is all about making things, as Yasmin tells me, my student. It is not 
geeky stuff, you sitting alone over a computer, I don't know, 24 hours in a row, but it's very creative, it's very, it involves communication, it involves many skills that females typically have. So, in an open day to encourage girls who I think this generation especially, who are coming through now, they grew up with mobile phones, with smartphones, and they have sort of almost an innate uh, interest. It's born in, in them because they grew up with it. How does this thing work? I want it to do this, it's not doing this. How can I make it work? So, I think we have a very receptive audience, and all we need to sort of slightly nudge them and say, if you come and do computer science, we promise you, your professors will not all be male. We promise you, your colleagues will not all be male, and we promise you fun things that you're going to enjoy. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Hand. Uh, since today we aim to inspire, our panelists will each tell us in one line what's their most inspiring quote and what you have to say to all the women out there. Bella, please. Um, I feel that, you know, for anyone to achieve what they want and what, what they desire for, first, there's always a dream, then you start, and then you persevere, and then it's, it's only then that you'll be able to achieve. And uh, I think that that's what, I think for anybody to achieve anything in life is just start, dream, and dream, start, and then persevere. Thank you, Bella. This is beautiful. Uh, we're going to move with yours. You have a choice, so just make it wisely and keep your eye on the prize. When I was 22, I founded an award-winning not-for-profit and didn't think I would, but just went for it. Don't care about what other people think. Don't let them tell you whether or not you're going to be good or whether you're going to fail. Just go for it and make the choice that's going to see you succeed. Uh, basically, I would just quote uh, Steve Jobs. That's one of my idols. And like someone said, like you know, we all have ideals that are main dominant. But I will not say that that's the reason that I idealize him. But it's because of the work that they have done and the life journey that he has gone through. Startups failed and thrown out of his own company, and then coming back again. So the quote that I really like about uh, that he has said is. The ones who are crazy enough to think that they can change the ones, uh, can change the world, are the ones who actually do. So, my advice to all the women out there: you have crazy ideas. Uh, trust me, it must be crazy in your head. Once you start following your dreams, it's not crazy enough. And just take the first step, and you will see it's not that difficult of a journey. And good luck. Yeah, I will have to agree with Joss and say just follow your instincts, what and enjoy what what you are doing and do what you enjoy. Uh, there is no right or wrong. If you feel you want to study engineering, you might go and work in engineering for a couple of years, you will not like it, and you might find other interests. In the UK, for example, statistics show that 30% of people only work in the field that they studied. So think of your field of study as a broad base. It gives you like a launch pad to do other things. So don't be compartmentalized and feel stuck with something that you have done. You may like it, you may not like it. Just keep doing what you enjoy because if you don't enjoy it, you're not going to succeed. You need to be enjoying what you're doing to succeed. Thank you for the recommendations and the inspiration. Now we're going to ask you because we aim to increase the circle of inspiration. To every table, kindly write down one line, something that inspires you, or a quote, and circulate it all among your table, and we'll collect them later, which uh, Mira Cole Foundation will publish them. Thank you, Mira. Uh, and uh, finally, to wrap up, I'm just going to say, women in STEM, is it easy? Of course it's not. We all know it's not easy. Yet nothing worth doing has ever been easy. Thank you.